Hello again everybody and welcome to the video for the 15 best targets of winter. This is our last one because we have completed all the seasons already. So it's our last video for the 15 best targets of and it's winter. So let's get started. cluster NGC 2158. The only tricky part about photographing this target with its cluster neighbor is to properly center the camera so you can capture both of them without cutting either one off. Messier 45. Just about the easiest star cluster to photograph. M45 is huge, extremely bright and looks amazing in close-up shots using a telescope and wide field photography. M44 is the third brightest object in the Messier catalog. It is possible to make M44 look quite beautiful in photographs depending on the types of star spikes your telescope spider veins will produce. M37, open cluster in Auriga. Photographing this object is simple and does not require many hours of exposure. This is our photo, taken in 45 minutes only. While mildly exciting, it is still a beautiful cluster of stars to capture. Also, it looks like an underwear in space. NGC 869 and NGC 884 are two clusters that are very similar to each other in size, magnitude, and age. There is also a smaller cluster to image nearby, NGC 957. You may also want to photograph each cluster individually if using a large telescope. M95 is a barred spiral galaxy that is part of the M96 galaxy group. Because of its small size and great amount of detail, it is best photographed with a large telescope. M96 is also in the M96 group, which is made up of more than 12 galaxies, including three Messier objects. Just like for M95, we recommend photographing this galaxy either by itself with a large instrument or using a 6 inch or 8 inch telescope and include as many neighbors as possible. The Crab Nebula is one of the most famous supernova nebulae in the night sky. The Crab was born in the year 1054 when a star died and the event was so bright that it was visible during the day for 23 days and also to the naked eye at night for almost 2 years. The California Nebula, despite being a famous target for astrophotographers, is really hard to spot with a telescope. Getting the right angle to make the entire state fit in the frame is a blind challenge. You might also want to purchase a filter before attempting to capture it or modify your DSLR camera. Messier 42 is the most popular nebula to photograph, and it's really easy to capture. This photo was taken through our 8-inch telescope, with a total exposure time of only one hour IC434 and Bernard33 create the famous Horsehead Nebula near the Orion Nebula. Photographing this group of nebulae is easy, as long as you spend enough time on it. The red gases of IC434 are faint and will look rainy if the total exposure time is too low. The Witchhead Nebula got its name because it looks like the profile of a witch. It is facing towards the bright blue supergiant star Rigel. Expect to spend several hours on the witch, or you will only be able to get parts of it. Photographing this Messier object is a bit of a challenge, as you will need long exposure times to capture the details within the dark lanes. Those are passing in front of the two stars that illuminate the nebula. The key to photographing this target is to spend as much time as possible getting the red colors from the loop, as those are really difficult to capture without filters or a modified camera. This target is pretty difficult due to the complexity of processing not only the loop, but all the different nebulae that will be visible in your final image. We end the winter season with the most festive deep sky object of all. NGC 2264 refers to two objects as one, the Christmas tree cluster and the cone nebula. A filter will help, but you may also yield great results without one. Thank you for watching guys, uh, we hope this video will be helpful to you and um, you now have all the, the seasons all the 15 targets and uh, lastly we want to introduce to you guys the astrophotographer's guidebook 
It has all of the targets from the past seasons inside of this book, including a lot of contributions that we asked from you guys on Facebook. So you might even see your own pictures in this book. And this book will be helpful to you guys for years to come as you can use it continuously to see the same targets as you get better and better with astrophotography. All right, so you will find the link to the past seasons in the description below and as well as the link for the book in case you're interested. All right, thank you very much and um, we'll see you for the next episode. Clear skies. Clear skies. <laughs>